in the Christian online space, it can be easy to get wrapped up in this person said this about Jesus or this controversial thing happened or LGBT issues or abortion or all that kind of thing. And yet when you turn off the phone, <laughs> when you turn off the TV, when you go back to your life, at the end of the day, it's like you and your relationship with God. And to be honest, um, I can make videos about all that other stuff. And yet when I turn off my computer and I turn off the camera, what am I faced with? I'm faced with the truth that in this moment, I don't feel on fire for God. I don't. That might scare some of you. That might make you feel nervous and it might make you feel like, is Isaac deconstructing? Is he going to leave the faith? Is he going to be one of these people that was super on fire for God and did all these things for him and was super, you know, evangelistic in how he went about his life. And then all of a sudden decided it wasn't, he wasn't cut out for it and he doesn't believe anything. Is that what's going to happen? Now, I want to tell you that that impulse and that trigger and that fear that you're experiencing it might be part of the problem. Because so often we equate our connection with God based on how we feel. I'm feeling this way today. Okay. I'm feeling good. I want to read my Bible. I want to pray. Okay. God, things are going well. Man, God is good. Yeah. He's good all the time. I love to go into church. I love the people at church. I love being a part of the body. You're feeling good. You're feeling absolutely great. But what happens when you think you're a super strong Christian, that you have this super strong relationship with God and something hits you? Maybe multiple things hit you at the same time that shake you, that shake you to your core, that shake you so much that you're forced to ask yourself, what do I even believe? For me, man, I portray myself online in some ways as a guy that's got it together, as a guy that, that knows the Bible, as a guy that's at least passionate and strong for the word of God and for God and his mission. So what happens to me and my identity when all of a sudden, man, I don't feel that passionate right now. I don't. What happens to me when I, I feel burnt out and tired and exhausted and confused? What happens? Man, we can get in this comparison game. Man, I'm supposed to be this super Christian. And meanwhile, these other people out here, man, they're on fire for God. They're putting on worship nights. They're doing evangelistic meetings. They're, they're going out on the street in the mall evangelizing people. That used to be me. What am I doing now? <laughs> I'm just trying to convince myself to wake up in the morning. That's how it can feel. We get in this comparison trap. We say, man, do I even have a relationship with God and you might start to panic. Maybe you've been to church camp. Maybe you've been to conferences like I have where you get so hyped up for God, man, I'm going to share the gospel, man. I'm going to do all these things, man. God is so awesome. And I'm so excited for building into his kingdom. I've been there, right? You're, you're just pumped about it. That's why I got two YouTube channels because I'm just pumped and I'm excited about making content for the glory of God, bringing people to him, helping them grow in their faith. And yet one day, or maybe a season of life, you're asking yourself, what am I doing? I don't even have the motivation to, to do anything today, let alone try to get online and tell people that they got to <laughs> follow God or they got to, you know, th this is something that's going on in culture and, and, and you just feel, what am I doing? What am I doing? We came down from this high of feeling like we're on the top of the spiritual world, like we're a super Christian. <laughs> Maybe you've been there. And we're forced to reconcile with what is true and real about the world, that there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of suffering. And things in your life that you thought were going to go one way, maybe they're not going to go that way. Maybe you're going to end up with a lot of shattered dreams. A lot of things in your life that you thought, man, I'm setting myself up for, I'm setting myself up well here. I, I, you know, I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do in order for God to give me what I want to, to get. And then you, you wind up with maybe some of the things, but a lot of the things, hey, maybe they never came to fruition. I don't feel on fire for God, I'm struggling, I'm maybe feeling depressed, anxious, you're panicked because you feel like you're fading. What do I 
do. Here's a couple things. I want you to know you're not alone. I want you to know that this is not a unique experience to you. Okay. The fact that you were on the spiritual high, you're feeling on fire and now you're not. That doesn't mean that you're drifting from God necessarily. It doesn't mean that God doesn't have you in his hand anymore. And your goal in this moment is not to try to get those feelings back. That's what everyone does. Okay. They get in this moment where they're not feeling on fire for God and they're feeling kind of low, either they just stay in that depressive state and they're like, okay, wow, I'm really, things are not going well and they kind of spiral. But some people, they panic and they say, okay, I got to get this back. I got to listen to some worship music. I got to figure out how I can feel the way I want to feel again. Our feelings in that context have become our God. They have been, okay? Because we're not as concerned about our actual relationship with God, we're more concerned about the feelings that come with them, the feelings that signal to us that we're okay, that we're doing well, that we're a good Christian, that we were in a good place, okay? The reality is there's going to be things in your life that are going to hit you down so hard, you won't know what side is up. It's happened to me, okay? That's when faith gets real. That's when you're forced to say, okay, what do I actually believe? <laughs> and and you kind of push off all the exterior stuff like okay all this extra stuff theological things that are you kind of got in the weeds of previously when you were super passionate about all this stuff okay let me just push that away for now and let me hone into the fundamentals of the faith what are the fundamentals okay let me just understand the gospel again let me just preach the gospel gospel to myself let me get back to christianity 101 because right now i'm struggling right now <laughs> you know, I know what I'm supposed to believe. I know in my mind what the truth is here. Okay, God's working all things out for my good and his glory. Yeah, he's sovereign. Yes, I can put my faith in him even when I don't understand. Yeah, all these things are working together for a, a purpose for those who love God. And yet, you doubt. You struggle to have faith. <laughs> you struggle to feel all those feelings that you want to feel. There's a popular saying that says faith over feelings. Friends, that is a lot easier said than done. That's a lot easier said than done. I can wake up in the morning and say, faith over feelings, Isaac. Faith over feelings. Does it, you know, I know you're feeling depressed right now. I know you feel anxious. I know you don't feel like getting out of bed. I know you feel like your life is ending maybe. Get out of bed. You can do it. Faith over feelings. Trust God. That's hard. That's hard. I want to extend you some compassion to know that, hey, if you're going through something like that, if you're feeling that way, oh, it's a, it's a road back. <laughs> I'm going to, have to say it's a, a long road back because made it maybe not as long of a road as you think it is, but it's a road back. Okay. What do we do in these circumstances when you feel burnt out, when you feel like, man, I don't feel on fire for God. I don't feel like reading my Bible. I don't feel like going to church. What do you do? What do you do? Okay, here's what I learned. I'm a newly married man, so take it from just a young man. I know there's a lot of folks watching that have been married a lot longer and you guys, you know, you guys got it together. Okay, cool. But for me, here, here's what I've learned. Okay, when you wake up in the morning, Maybe you're feeling grumpy. You're feeling a little bit just disconnected and, you know, whatever. You're going through your, your moody, okay? Does that mean that you don't empty the dishwasher? Does that mean that you don't take out the trash? Uh, does that mean that you don't cook your wife breakfast or, you know, you contribute to cleaning up? Does that mean that? Maybe for some of you say, okay, hey, you know what? That's what it does mean, okay? <laughs> I've heard from some more married, older married couples that uh, that's a very bad road to go down, okay? But no, hopefully what you do is you're going to take out the trash anyway. You're going to empty the dishwasher anyway. Even though you're not feeling totally connected to them, you're not feeling the greatest, you're feeling kind of grumpy, you're going to do it. Why? Because in that moment, you're following your values and your commitment and your convictions over those momentary feelings that you're experiencing, okay? Because those feelings don't dictate truth. Those feelings don't have to dictate your, your actions. 
That's the truth of it. I can accept that I'm feeling this way. I can accept that I, maybe I don't want to go to church. I can accept that maybe I don't want to read my Bible right now. I, I feel distant from God. I don't want to do these things. I can accept that. But what am I going to do? Am I going to follow my values and my commitment to God and say, God, I don't want to go to church right now, but I'm going to show up. I don't want to talk to anybody, but I guess if somebody comes to talk to me, I'll talk back to them. (laughs) I don't want to read my Bible right now, but God, I'll spend five minutes in the word because I know it's your revealed revelation to me. I know you, you want to speak to me through it, so I'm going to do it, but I don't feel like it. And you take these steps, as simple as they may seem, and to some of you more spiritual folks out there, you might say, Isaac, this isn't enough. You need to, if you're really feeling distant from God, then you need to go hyper into the, reading the word an hour a day and praying an hour a day and go on a spiritual retreat and maybe go to a youth conference so you can get amped up again. Hey, friend, I'm glad that, that this faith thing, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is good for you, this is easier for you, but for a lot of us, we're struggling out here. And for me, what I've found in the darkest of times, the darkest of, of nights, it's, it's reading that Bible verse. It's reading the word for five minutes. It's praying out to God for strength and saying, God, I'm distant from you. I feel distant from you. I know nothing can separate me, or separate me from the love of God. But right now, it feels like a lot is separating me from the love of God. That's how I feel. Confessing how you feel to God. Confessing your sin to God. Hey, God, I know unbelief is a sin. I know that. But I'm not going to fake and say I have faith and I believe when right now I'm struggling. And God has compassion for you even in the midst of that. He does. Because these things are hard that you're going to go through in your life. Maybe you're going through them right now. They're going to try to shake your faith. They are. Oh, so what do we do? What's the solution? Well, the solution isn't trying to find the feelings again. It's not. It's to be content in the space of saying, I'm going to follow God. I'm going to follow my values and my commitment to God, regardless of how I feel. That's my commitment. And if somewhere along the way, (laughs) which is going to happen, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel encouraged. You're going to feel inspired. You're going to feel connected. That's a blessing. But it doesn't dictate my relationship with God. That's not what says, oh, I've made it. I'm a mature Christian now. No, because some of the most mature Christians, some of the most godly people, feel disconnected from God. They feel far from God. They don't feel on fire, but what do they do? They stay consistent with how they act, how they behave. They're not going to fall off the rails because of how they feel on a particular morning. Yeah, it's going to be hard to get out of bed some mornings. Absolutely. But I'm still going to trust in God. I'm going to put my faith in him as much as I can. (laughs) Like some days it's not a lot, but I'm going to trust that God, God is going to grow me and he's going to forgive me (laughs) for my unbelief and carry me and give me faith that I need to to carry on. What I found what God is doing in my life is he is taking out the old foundation, the foundation of saying, I feel this way, therefore, therefore I will do this. Or I feel super on on fire and super passionate, so I'm going to act this way. He's taking that foundation away and he's replacing it with a new foundation. It's a foundation of the gospel, a foundation of saying, this is what I've done for you, Isaac. Now, you might not always feel my forgiveness and my love and my compassion and my truth and my presence, but it's there. It's there. And what I've done has significant implications, okay? I'm with you. I care for you. But I want you to act and behave and follow me regardless of how you feel. To me, I look at the disciples, okay? The disciples, you think the disciples woke up every single morning and were like, I'm so excited to follow Jesus. I'm so excited to follow him wherever he is and encounter all the the demons and the sick people and see him preach and see him get really accosted by Pharisees and religious leaders. Like, I'm so excited about that. I'm so, so excited to be associated with that guy. No, I think a lot of time, Maybe not a lot of time, but definitely some of the time, the disciples were just petrified. <laughs> they woke up in the morning. They're like, God, uh, Jesus, I, I'm scared. I don't really know if I want to follow you today, but I'm going to do it anyway. And they did. Man, that's us. <laughs> we wake up today and we say, God, I'm kind of scared about what you're going to lead me into, but I'm going to follow you anyway. And maybe I feel a little anxious today. <sighs> maybe I feel a little hopeless today, but I'm going to follow you anyway. Because 
at the end of the day, I know you are the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> I think of uh, the verse where it says, you know, where else would I go? Where, like, where else am I going to go? I think that was Peter. I could be wrong on that. You guys let me know in the comments. But it's like, where, where else would I go, Lord? You hold the words to eternal life. Where else would I go? Man, that's where I am. <laughs> Sometimes, some days, it's like, hey, I don't have a lot of faith to give God, but where else would I go? You hold the words to eternal life. If you guys enjoyed this video and were encouraged by it, I'd ask you to subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time and click the link in my bio to join Patreon today. As a paid member, it would be a huge blessing to me. I'm supported by you watching this video. Uh, it would be just an amazing blessing to me that I would be able to continue to do this and provide for my family. So thank you so much and until next time, God bless.